Hi, welcome to the impact of sedation vacations on VAP in the mechanically ventilated patient. I am Yvette Santana, your respiratory therapist. This is for Boise State University, course Respiratory Care 355 with Professor Keiko. Thank you for joining me. So the use of sedation in the ICU for mechanically ventilated patients is well known throughout every ICU. The use of sedation in the management of mechanically ventilated patients in the intensive care unit is crucial. It's really important to use um, on our patients because it helps reduce pain and anxiety. It helps decrease oxygen consumption. It helps prevent patient ventilator dyssynchrony. And when used judiciously, it can help reduce ventilator associated events, including VAP. So the purpose of this paper is to evaluate VAP prevalence in mechanically ventilated patients when continuous sedation is interrupted with a daily sedation vacation. So what is ventilator associated pneumonia and how is it diagnosed? According to the CDC, ventilator associated pneumonia can be diagnosed with the presence of new or progressive infiltrates on a chest x-ray with no other obvious cause in patients receiving mechanical ventilation for more than 48 hours in the ICU with at least two of the following criteria. The patient must have a fever or a temperature greater than or equal to 38 degrees Celsius. There has to be leukocytosis or leukopenia, purulent endotracheal aspirate, and an increasing oxygen requirement. VAP has several effects. In fact, VAP is one of the highest infection concerns that hospitals face today and may be responsible for up to 60% of all deaths from hospital-acquired illnesses, or HAIs, in the United States alone. VAP has an increased mortality rate, and any patient that contracts VAP has a mortality rate of 33%. VAP also has an increased time needed for mechanical ventilation days and overall days in the ICU. It affects 28% of ventilated patients and thus increases the time in the ICU by 4 to 6 days. As a result, VAP leads to an increase in therapeutic expenses always, with each event increasing patients' cost by twenty to $40,000. Now we'll go over sedation vacation. A sedation vacation and daily sedation interruption are a delicate balancing act of tightly titrating a patient's sedative dose to provide comfortable and agitation-free sedation with the lowest possible dosage. It is always patient-specific as patient tolerances and disease processes warrant different doses of sedation. Currently, there are two primary scale systems utilized to assess the degree of sedation and agitation present during a sedation vacation. The first one is the Sedation Agitation Scale, or the SAS, which places a numerical value on the mental status of a patient where 1 is an unarousable state, 4 is a calm and cooperative patient, and 7 is a dangerously agitated or combative patient. The second is the Richmond Agitation Sedation Scale, or the RAS. It has a similar parameter of mental status assessment, with a negative 5 being unarousable, 0 being alert and calm, and a positive 4 being a dangerously agitated or combative patient. There are many complications associated with the use of continuous sedation infusions in the mechanically ventilated patient. For example, when a patient is sedated and unconscious, the protective reflex that helps prevent aspiration is impaired. We see this with the reduced cough and reduced gag reflex, which directly interferes with a patient's ability to handle their own oropharyngeal secretions. And since mechanically ventilated patients receive continuous IV infusions of sedation to prevent discomfort, these patients are at an especially high risk for aspiration due to suppression of the coughing reflex. 
continuous sedation also prolongs intubation and increases the risk of that. In addition, continuous sedation builds an increased tolerance in the amount of sedation used throughout the ICU stay. In the clinical trial study used, the effects of daily sedation interruption protocol on early incidence of ventilator-associated pneumonia among patients hospitalized in critical care units receiving mechanical ventilation is a clinical trial study published by the Iranian Journal of Nursing and Midwifery Research. According to the study, 80 mechanically ventilated patients with IV sedation infusions were selected and split in between two groups, an intervention group and a control group. The intervention group received a daily sedation interruption or sedation vacation, while the control group received routine sedation vacations. Routine sedation vacations happen as normal without any predetermined or set frequency. According to the clinical trial, data was analyzed by using repeated measure analysis of variances, or ANOVA, chi-square, and independent t -tap. The results from the study were alarming. The results demonstrated that the incidence of VAP in the intervention group was significantly lower than in the control group. The results showed that the incidence of the rate of VAP in the intervention group and the control group were as follows. On the third day of intervention, 0% of the intervention group had contracted VAP, while 15% of the control group had contracted VAP. By the fourth day of intervention, 12.5% of the intervention group had contracted VAP, while in the control group, 50% had contracted VAP. And finally, on the fifth day of intervention, 27.5% of the intervention group had signs of VAP, while 55.3% of the control group had VAP. As you can tell with this resu result, the intervention group had a significantly lower rate of VAP than the control group. So in conclusion, based on the clinical trials discussed and the data interpreted, there appears to be a benefit of implementing a daily sedation interruption. Some of the benefits include a decreased mortality rate, decrease in the duration of mechanical ventilation days, decrease in the length of days in the ICU, a decrease in VAP, and an overall decrease in hospital bills. Now that we've completed reviewing all the data and the results, I would like to propose a question, well now what? We have an opportunity to work and accomplish a multidisciplinary collaboration. That means we can get our ICU doctors our nurses, our respiratory therapists, our physical therapists, and everyone will work together to create a protocol that could potentially save the hospital a lot of money, save patients' lives, and utilize resources responsibly. We can start by getting involved in existing communities and see what support we can get from them, and ultimately conduct our own study with a new protocol to get our own set of results. Thank you.